Do you want me to like hide behind something? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just like do a curtain. Yeah. Like nothing to see here. Nothing to see. <laughs> Cody, Hello. how are you? I'm all right. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're coming through great. I'm sorry, I'm so late. I I actually almost forgot, and I'm like so mad at myself, but. <laughs> Well, Cody, I'd like to introduce you to Wendy Wilson, who's here Hi. joining me. Hi, Wendy. Hi, how are you, Cody? I'm good. Actually, it's funny that you're here. I just picked up a cassette copy of um, the album with Hold On on it. No way. Yep, just found it. The just debut album, right? It is the, de it is the debut album, is it? Yeah, I think oh so. Oh my gosh, like a, a rare copy in, a, in like a obscure record shop or something? Yeah, my local record shop. Uh, and, you bought a, cool. and you bought a cassette. Yep. Yeah, I have a bunch of cassettes. You gotta look at my shirt. Nice. Old, sc it? old school. <laughs> it shows what, a is, <laughs> what does it say? Old school. Oh, cool. And it's got a picture it. of a cassette on it. I got this from Dean. Dean sent this to me. Nice. Actually, yeah. my, my, my roommate just brought home a, a women's magazine, uh, Women's World with Carney on it. Oh, oh my just, oh my gosh it's out i didn't know that it was out yet let me grab it <laughs> look he's, he's got a curtain he actually has a curtain <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> oh it's right here oh i love it yes yeah. we've been waiting we've been waiting to see it that's so uh -huh. cool i um uh, i'm probably gonna make some of the recipes on it seriously oh, yeah, I was thinking, like, I have it. Why not, you know? There's some, like, cheesecake bites in there. I was like, I'll, I might as well make some. Oh, that's yeah, fantastic. she, what? What, David? I just said, that's fantastic. Yeah, no, she's a really good pastry chef, like, amazing. Like, she's self-taught, but boy, oh, boy, they're good. I believe it. So, yeah, you should make it. I love, oh, who's that? Uh, this is Cece. Hey, hey Cece. Hi, cutie. <laughs> you, I'm actually allergic to cats. I had a cat when I was little named Sunshine. Um, but I don't know what happened. But when I turned like 20, I started when I touched a cat, I would like my eyes would get all swollen. So but I love them. I love cats. So now I'm a dog. I'm a dog person. Say hi to Katie. Katie. Well, let's see Katie. Oh, hi, Katie. Katie, say hi. <laughs> She's the best. She's, She's adorable. Half, half pit bull. <laughs> oh, so She's cute. Adorable. She gets crazy. Yeah. So, how's everybody? What's going on? Well, Cody, so uh, I, uh, all the Zoom, all the VIP zooms up until this point, you did, I usually have the guests come on after we get started. But uh, Wendy, Wendy's uh, time frame is a little bit tighter, so okay. she she's uh, ready to go from the beginning. So you get the surprise right off the right right out of the gate. And I'm going to tell you, <laughs> Wendy, Wendy may know what I'm talking about here, but there's another VIP thing that I'm doing. So there's a show okay. that from the 1950s that Groucho Marx used to have called "You Bet Your Life." And yeah. on the show, he'd have contestants on. And if they happened to say an everyday word while they were on his show, a duck would come down holding the word and they would get something special. So I've written a word in here. It's an everyday word. It's not in the uh, Beach Boys word. It, that would be way too easy. Okay. So it's just mm -hmm. an everyday word. If you happen to say it during the Zoom, mm -hmm. you'll get a super rare kind of one of a kind collectible. Whoa. So that's. that's and you so gotta remind saying, me. You have to remind me at the end of the Zoom to tell you what it is if you don't say it, because I've forgotten twice, three times today to to tell them what the word was. It's so just I, should <laughs> start, I should start reading off the dictionary right now. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I want my free whatever. <laughs> that's cool. That's a really cool. Uh, that's a cool way to give away something. You know. So here's. I'll give you an example. Just one thing, real quick. So this is autographed by Paul von Mertens from Brian's band. Mm -hmm. And this is the harmonica okay. that Paul recorded uh, from the Reimagines Gershwin album. Uh, what's the song that ended up being an instrumental? You have plenty of, um, I'm going to forget it. I have it right here. Give me a second. I have a copy of it too. Um, got plenty of nothing? No. Uh, I think it's I got plenty of nothing. Track five would be I got plenty of nothing. That's the instrumental. 
And okay. the story is that they would lay down tracks and put down instruments for Brian to kind of come in and follow and sing along to. They did it one day, Brian went home, they came in the next day and Paul said, Brian, do you wanna go ahead and lay down your vocal now? And he said, no, that's an instrumental. This is the harmonica. That's awesome. So wow, and then, he, and then he took it on the road for the tour. So Ooh. this, so he autographed that and sent it to me with that story. So if you say the word, this will be the item. Okay. So that's uh, just <laughs> you know. Is it, uh, Cody, is it related? You, is it related to? I'm too nervous. <laughs> I'm too nervous to say any potential keywords. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh man. Uh, is it related to what, Wendy? To music? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You can't tell me. It's all right. It's okay. so true. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, the secret word and yeah, no hints. No hints. Not a single hint. It's not music at all. It's not music related at all. It's just a it's all just right. an everyday word and I was out for a walk one day. And that's okay. Yeah. I saw you pull that out on the Giggins video and that's 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 actually what made me join the VIP club. Oh. I've like every once in a while I've been buying like a group of ESQs and and then having a you know having something to read on a rainy day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, um, I just bought another like six pack of them and now I'm a, now I'm a member. So very cool. Very cool. You look like a little bit like our drummer that we had. He's from Denmark. I'm a drummer. So no way. <laughs> yeah. My dad had oh, me in yeah. the kit when I was like three months old. I've been drumming my whole life and I've been recording studio style since i was like 13 so you look the part you look you look you, like you, one you, you <laughs> thanks wendy very cool <laughs> yeah how old are you uh 31 mm. so i got a little I'm, bit of a baby face that i'm thankful for yeah <laughs> so um, Cody, when you were when you were young do you remember the first time you heard a beach boys recording that you uh you know that got you interested in the group, you know, where you were? I'm pretty sure that it had to have been my mom and from her, her dad. And she was explaining to me the lyrics of Little Deuce Coop. And she was like, they really know what they're talking about. Competition clutch, competition clutch with the four on the floor, purrs like a baby when the lake pipes roar. I remember yep. like her, her explaining that to me. And then, you know, all through my life, you know, I've heard the tracks and one day it just clicked. My roommate was like, you got to listen to Sunflower. And then went uh -huh. through that. Then I heard Smiley Smile. And then it just, you know, it just became a big rabbit hole from then on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for me, I mean, I always listened to the music just because I was around it. But um, when I was like 13, and my sister was like 14, we were sent by Capitol Records a whole, like, catalog of the beach boys like greatest hits and it was when cds like first started coming out and stuff and i remember listening to everything you know all of those records smiley smile and friends and just so many great songs that i had never really heard before yeah. and that's when i started to become like a bigger fan and delved into the whole music and you know the hits are cute and all but the real you know the what great you, stuff yeah. is is the the stuff that you you know that most people don't know the meat and so. potatoes yes yes <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah for, so. for me it's like a tie between i mean i just love like they call it the lo-fi trilogy smiley smile uh wild honey and friends like yeah that's it for me that's just like the cream of the crop oh yeah for sure it doesn't get for any sure. cooler than that just like yeah no it's like it just makes you feel like really happy when you hear it and it's yeah. comforting. So yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, I think my dad had a lot of fun with that too, you know, just creating all of that and doing what he wanted to do instead of what just the record load company. Off. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of what the executives like, wanted him to do. It so. probably took a lot of courage to to move on from smile and then to just make a home studio in your guys' house and do smiley smile. Like Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, I mean, I think my dad was most comfortable at home too. You know, he was a homebody. Right. So yeah, I don't think he left the house for like three years once, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think just being at home and, and being able to walk down to the kitchen, make lunch and come back up and, you know, do his thing. 
but um and you know he didn't really like to travel that much so right. yeah it was better for him i think um, but yeah it, it is cool it is cool like the prolific how, how prolific he was in such a small amount of time forever yeah what are you guys working on anything anytime soon or uh do Great you, question. like the california kind of like the california band cal what is it exactly called california, the california, saga? Hell's, Hell's endless. california saga yeah yeah well that that was a while ago that we did that um i mean we don't have any plans currently to do that i think it would be fun to do it again to, to have a little reunion you know maybe write a song yeah. Um, but I think everybody's so busy with their families and stuff. It's hard to get everyone in one room, in one room, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a novelty but, thing, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It was kind of a novelty thing and fun while it lasted. Um, and now, you know, I just like I have a show coming up with Wilson Phillips in um, Northern California. Sweet. So but yeah, it ha it's been really slow this year, though. I don't know why. It's it's strange um, because we did like the mass singer and you would oh, think yeah. that I saw some videos yeah. of that. Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot That's of fun. Cool. It was it was actual torture while we were doing it, but <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I was. couldn't imagine what it's what it's being like on a on a TV set doing something like that. Covered up, you know, covered yeah. up. It'd be like yeah. being a mascot, right? <laughs> Yeah, it was just like because the costumes weren't were very uncomfortable and heavy. So um, just having to sing on top of that and trying to be on key and the whole deal, you know, and dance. Yeah. But but, uh, you know, it was great. Um, in retrospect, I look back and I'm glad we did it. But you would think like the phone would be ringing off the hook for <laughs> Wilson Phillips shows. But we, we do get offers. I guess they're just not the right offers, you know yeah so that's, that's we're a kind tough of thing. it's a tough thing i don't i know you do gigs right so it's like yeah i'm like really i do a lot of recording for local bands here in milwaukee and and i'm i'm part of like oh. the hardcore punk scene so that's always like popping off like crazy hardcore shows and stuff and i'm oh. i've been like writing i have like probably like 30 songs that i'm just like trying to figure out which ones to put on on an album and then i have a whole entire beach boys cover album planned i already have like five songs recorded uh -oh. for real um, yep and i just did That's a cover so cool. of mountain of love which i know is not their song but and i i paid a guy like my first session musician to do a harmonica solo on it are you talking about like sweet caroline oh no, that's... mountain of love no different song no like, you're talking about you're talking about you're talking about sweet mountain like American oh, sweet. Spring, Sweet Mountain. No, I'm talking yes. about um, like Johnny Rivers covered. Mountain of Love, love Mountain oh. of Love. Oh my God. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Have, yeah. Have, yeah. Have, so like, yeah, Beach Boys did it on the party album. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's oh. it. So I kind of mixed there. There's an original version by Harold Dorman from 1960. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I mixed like his like slower tempo version. It kind of has like these like big beat drums too. Yeah. And I mix like that with the Beach Boys version. I put my own like rock twist on it. So that's so great. That I think good. that's. I'm, well, I'm interested love... now. What's going on? Yeah, <laughs> I'm putting. It's like very. It's like very like yeah. shoegazy rock style, yeah. and I'm putting that out with a cover of "In My Room" that I'm doing. Oh, cool. are you serious? I think yeah. that's so so awesome. I'd love to hear it. I would love to hear what you do. Well, I I have the basically the mix downs. So I'll I'll have to find a way to send them to you. Yeah, please. Happy to. Happy to send yeah, them up. I could uh, I could just send them to the email that I got from you, David, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Be awesome. Thank and you. I'm 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 now interested too. So you have to you know yeah. I want to I'm I'm ready yeah. to hear your album when it comes out now. Yeah, Absolutely. I'll, I'll send you some of the mix downs I have so far. Um, You're gonna be on a billboard. Yeah, if I can afford a PR, <laughs> if I can afford. Well, a when PR you be agent. able to see your billboard driving down you know through LA? Are we gonna? Well, I mean, what's the name of the album gonna be? Uh, so the, uh, the Beach Boys album, I don't have a name for. My own album, I have some names floating around. My band's name is Shame Wave. Okay. Shame Wave? Shame Wave, yeah. I have music on streaming and stuff. Okay, I'll check you out. I haven't put what? anything new. I put out some ABBA covers in like, like not for even real? a year ago. Yeah. Ab oh my God. Beach Boys is my favorite yep. band. ABBA is my second favorite, I would say. Huh. <laughs> well, that's funny because we do both in our shows. Um, we do Does Your Mother Know? <laughs> 
does your mother know? And uh, obviously dancing queen, right? Because it's every, yeah. everybody wants to hear that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, ABBA's great. We grew up with ABBA. Oh yeah, I Very like cool. ABBA quite a bit too. Do you guys yeah. have a favorite oh, favorite cool. ABBA album? Um, I don't remember the names of them actually. <laughs> For sure, my favorite um, song by but, ABBA, "Winter Takes It All." But I love oh, "Winter song. Takes It All." But I like. For some reason, I love Chikikita. Oh, on uh, that's on Voulez Vu, I think, and then Winter Takes It All is on Super Trooper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like the female voices. I just think they're so pretty together. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. Um. Um. But I think that's cool that you're in the band. Um. And you're in Mil Milwaukee. Do you guys like travel out of Milwaukee, or do you just do local stuff? So like my personal music, I have my friends mm -hmm. play shows with me. We try to do like one little like mini tour a year, but it's not quite popping off yet. Whereas my hardcore band that's called World I Hate, there's mm -hmm. a lot of excitement for it. So like the hardcore stuff, it always moves faster. You know, we we're all over the place. Like we just went to Canada. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. We're, well, we're coming out to Cali hopefully next year. So. Oh, well, hey. let us know. We'll check you out. You won't want to see that. You won't want to see that band. Yes, I will. <laughs> okay. Yes, I will. You'd, you'd be surprised. My first, my the first record I ever bought was Rush. Okay. Like, was it called Moving Pictures or something? Oh, that's I saw that tour. Oh my gosh! What did you really? Album. Yes. Here in Charlotte, oh. I'll never forget it. Neil Pert. The thing that stands out in my mind was Neil Pert was in a uh, cage. His, his drum was above the, the, the rest, you know, Getty Lee and the other fellow, I can't recall. But um, yeah. so Neil's thing, and it, but it was in a cage and Whoa. his arms never stopped moving. I mean, it was just like, um, it, it was such an experience. I saw, oh. that, I saw the police too at the same place. And That's I just awesome. remember thinking, comparatively thinking, because they're both three piece bands, mm -hmm. just that what an amazing drummer Stuart Copeland was and what an amazing drummer Neil Pert was. I yeah. Mean, just, yeah. Just, some of the best yeah rest in peace what a legend yeah exactly i saw the police live in the i think it was the 80s yeah that I was saw, fun i love it, it. Was ghost in the machine tour and joan jett and the black hearts open for police yeah nice. that's the one i saw oh yeah. no kidding okay yeah i saw that too <laughs> yeah, that's a great tour such a great mm -hmm. tour that's yeah. so funny, you guys. i, I want to ask you do you happen to have since you got you just went and got the debut Wilson Phillips album one cassette. Is there any chance you have the 1997 The Wilsons CD? No, I don't. Dude, you must get it. <laughs> I've heard David's it. I just don't fan. physically have it. It's like just all the different types of music that you're describing that you like. That CD almost encompasses it all. Oh, okay. David. And it's songs, and it's so, like naturally their dad's on a couple of tracks. So those, you know, you get you hear those things, and they're they're cool, especially Monday Without You. Um, mm -hmm. But there's songs that Wendy and Carney wrote from their life experiences, and it's just oh man, yeah, it's till divine. I, till I it's die, divine. That's cool. Yeah, we we kind of departure in this record. I mean, you, you won't recognize us, honestly. Okay, that's cool yeah. though. That's you know, that's what you have to do as a, as a musician. You have to. Grow. And I think it's on streaming services. It I is. I'm looking album... at. I'm looking at it right now. Okay, I think yeah. it came out like two or three years ago on streaming. Yeah. Yeah, it was so fun to for make. sure. You're gonna like. You're gonna love it, Cody. You're, Does oh. anyone? Okay, you might not be able to answer this, but the American Spring album got mm -hmm. put up on streaming for one day and then taken mm -hmm. down. Is that coming really? back anytime soon? That's yeah. a great question. I didn't even know about this. I didn't so. know that either. It was up for one day. That's crazy. American Spring, you mean with their sister Bobby? That one? Uh, like Spring uh, with with, with uh, uh, your, your mom Diane. and Diane. Yeah. Your... Oh, Mom and Dee. Yeah. Well, the Spring album is one of my favorites. I mean, it's amazing. That's how Carney and I pretty much learned how to sing was through my mother and her voice. And just singing with her, you know, just loving it. And just very, it's very like emotional for me now when I hear it because it's just my childhood, you know, that, that touches something. But I yeah. love that record. I, I have an actual copy of it on vinyl. Oh, vinyl. Cool. I got yeah. lucky, Cody, because Carney sent me her, and this is so strange, Wendy. Carney sent me her copy of it on CD. Yeah. Like back around 2000 or 2001. Mm -hmm. And I had it and I kept it. 
Yeah. And I kept it and kept it and kept it. And then around 2015 or so, I walked into my room and this is at a different house than, than where I am now. All that stuff's back here now. But I walked mm -hmm. into the room and I went right to it and I thought, this doesn't belong to me. And I don't know why it took all those years for me. And it was just all of a sudden I walked into the room and I looked at it. I walked right to it. And I said, this is, I don't think this belongs to me. And I immediately sent Carney a text and said, you only had one copy of Spring, right? She said, yes. I said, on its way. Oh, that was funny. And, and it's the strangest thing that it, that I, I had it all those years. Yeah. And then it just one day, it just occurred. So I burned, naturally, I burned a copy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, before I sent it off, but man, it's, it is such an amazing and shine away too, which is not, which is a bonus cut on the CD, mm -hmm. the song shine away that your dad wrote, mm -hmm. uh, for them yeah. is an, is a, just another, there's that album. outtake too called snowflakes. Snowflakes. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. So you good. are, you're a real, you're a real serious fan. I can tell. I love the music so much, you know, I, I can't go a day without just like thinking about how great the songs are, you know, coming home from work, learning one on guitar, Aww. you know, whatever it takes, you know, I just, I'm, you know, just reading a bunch of books, ESQs, like, it's the history that keeps bringing me back and obviously the music ties it all together, so. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a special thing, you know, the whole family is very musical, but um, yeah, I mean, my my father obviously was a big inspiration to us and helped us his name got us in the door so you know we're we're very thankful for that you know but and your, worked... talent, your talent took it the rest of the way obviously thank you sweetie thank you well we worked <laughs> we worked our asses off let me tell you <laughs> you know yeah. to make it to make it to where we were but yeah thank you appreciate that oh and appreciate you being here in, ca in case you haven't looked, I have to say this now while I'm thinking of it, because it, Billy reminded me of this, first his soul, uh, several, a couple of years back. They do the Hey Santa video. There's a Hey Santa music video, Carney and Wendy did. And oh, yeah, end, yeah. And at the end of it, May, is it, or is it just Irving Ravel who's in it? I can't remember, but. They're in the Hey Santa video? They're at the very end. Jonah's in it. Like, they all kind of come together around a couch together. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember if Grandma was in it. I think Grandpa. I, I, Grandpa, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. I, I don't think more. Was... Yeah, and it's so what cool. You, you gotta watch it. At the, it's at the very end. It's just so, uh, so cool because it's... I said, uh, that's fair. some deep lore. It yeah. is. It, oh, my gosh. There's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> Always, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so is it is it raining there? Is it sunny? How? What is it? Uh, it's like a nice cool 80 degrees we're getting like our last heat little heat wave before uh before the fall really sets in but the trees are already turning it's beautiful everything's kind of like orangish red oh that's yeah. so pretty we don't really get seasons here in california so <laughs> but the weather has turned a little bit it has there's a shift so that's nice yeah <laughs> what is it, anything you want to ask wendy um, I already asked a couple of questions that came to mind when I wanted to ask them, I guess, about the American Spring thing. But I guess yeah. put in a good word, try to get that album back up on streaming because there's a lot of uh, dedicated fans that would listen to it. Well, I will tell my mom. She would be <laughs> flattered, really flattered. <laughs> um, I don't know who's in charge of this, but we'll see. Probably what we Universal. Do. I would think Universal. I... Really? Probably out of anybody's hands. But because I know that they had the they had control over the Wilson's album. And then, yeah, it's hard. I, I think so, because I think if you look at that vinyl release, it was on it was a uh, United Artists. And I think United Artists is now universal. OK. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, I think they shift. Yeah, they moved to it. Um, well, I, I'll see what I can do. You never <laughs> no know. worries if you can't. I just figured I'd say something, and uh, those things are so often out of the artist's control, unless yeah, you're Taylor Swift. Yeah, I, I don't think I have any power over this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah. So what what's what's on the horizon? So are you? So you're going to tour? Do you have a girlfriend? Ah, uh, no, I'm I'm pretty pretty single mostly. I I kind of just I have this really awful work-life balance and uh, commitment issues where I just work on my music and uh, 
-hmm. I don't want to disappoint anybody. So just kind of. Well, once That's you get fair. out there as a musician, the, the, finding a girl won't be an issue. Nobody wants to date a musician. <laughs> Well, no, that's the op it's the opposite. Uh, Everyone wants to date a musician <laughs> until they until they really are in it, and then it's like ah. Right. Well, yeah, because they they're yeah. very like noncommittal. But it's a hard old, life. It's a hard lifestyle to live, you know. That's the old joke, right? What do you call a musician without a girlfriend? Homeless. <laughs> <laughs> that's very well, I do. I do HVAC for a living, so that pretty much. Oh, well, then you yeah, you're you're busy. Time. I'll bet you stay yeah. busy. Yeah, oh, well, it's cool. good that you got something else going on that you're not just solely, yeah. you know, relying on the music. But you, you sound like you're staying incredibly busy. I do stretch myself yeah. a bit. Then I'm trying to, I'm trying to do the, I'm trying to do the the Brian Wilson lay in bed for a couple of years thing. Honestly. <laughs> oh no! Don't don't do yeah, it. Yeah, I was not going to recommend. Just like a sober, less sober though. Okay. Okay. All right. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah, yeah. you're not. young enough. I'm not, actually, I'm not actually going to do that, but I do need I do need some more rest than I've been giving well, myself. Everyone needs to give the uh, allow themselves time to re-energize. Yeah, you yeah. you definitely need to allow that for yourself. Um, yeah, thanks you for do. asking those questions. <laughs> it's hysterical. Oh my God. Oh, uh, Cody, Cody, I don't know if Al will be coming to your. I would be sure and check out Al Jardine's site too because. Occasionally, Carney and Wendy will be with Al. They do. do I, I missed them on Labor Day. Oh yeah, oh, that's God. a really fun. It's a fun show. It's a lot of fun because we do yeah. like all all hits basically of the Beach Boys. So it's like exciting, yeah. you know, the whole way through. And a um, couple obscure songs, but mostly like just hit after hit after hit. So yeah. it's it's a it's a real fun show to go to. You know, you'll have a blast. Um, and Carney and I love it. I mean, we did it 23 years ago too. And then we just started doing it again. Yeah. But uh, we love it. Yeah, I need to see it. Yeah. And Matt Jardine is stellar. He's got stellar a pristine singer. vocal. Like he has just got that falsetto. Oh, Can't take yeah. it away from him. He he nails it. Yeah. He really does. He does um what what is that song? Uh Surf's Up. Yeah, he they does Surf's Up now. And I've seen boy, like a, oh boy. I've seen like a video of Al Jardine's band with Matt doing Surf's Up and it, it just gives you chills, you know, it just gives the goosebumps. Oh my God, we we just cry. We just watch him and cry. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's awesome. He's yeah. been really doing that Waves of Love song over and over again. Who Al? Really? Yeah, it's been mixing it like so many times. Oh, and uh, yeah, so that's, Carney. Um, I don't know that. Well, it's a song that actually has Carl on it. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, it was fin it was Al wrote it from what I'm remember if I'm remembering correctly. Al wrote it and then wanted to get the other guys on it, similar to what he did with Don't Fight the Sea. But okay. they were on tour at the time, so he had Carl add his vocal while they were on tour in just in our hotel room where okay. they just set up a mic and Carl did the vocal. Oh, wow. So it's that's why the vocal isn't great i mean it's great in terms of carl's voice but it's not mm -hmm. it's not really mixed in correctly and so and al keeps tinkering with it yeah mm -hmm. so every time That's he tinkers cool. with it you hear less and less of carl really and i wish he'd just leave it alone yeah i think he's right. about to put out mix four i saw a post about it well, <laughs> but, the sacrilegious it's, mix his sec it's basically <laughs> his, it's his new it's his new uh loop-de-loop flip-flop Oh, oh my god al is classic yeah he gets on these tangents you know where he's like he gets into like one thing and he can't he like obsesses over it he's yep. so funny he's great he he's i think his guy. studio i think it's called if i remember correctly the red barn yes I yeah think. okay is, is that right okay yeah yeah and it's in got Monterey? your father's piano in it does the it tack, the tack piano the, remember the white, the grand white grand piano that Brian had on tour in the early '80s with the Beach Boys? That's the piano yeah. in Al's barn. What? Very cool. Oh my gosh! And I think I'm getting this up the right. And the mixing board is the same mixing board that was used for Dark Side of the Moon, I believe. Whoa! No way! That's crazy. I, I well, think there's some good <laughs> vibes in there, right? Something. 
<laughs> it's been a while since so it's, it's funny how time does things to one's mind because I'll, I'll be so certain about something and then I'll have to then I'll go look it up and then I'll go well how did I get that so wrong like I'll give you an example I got it in my mind that Audrey was in the 1992 Beach Boys video hot fun in the summertime I just got it in my mind she was in it I must have dreamt it because then I went mm. and watched the video she's nowhere to be found I don't oh, know there's some there's some there is an elderly lady in it but it's not audrey so i don't know where my brain concocted this idea that audrey yeah. wilson was in that video well, this is I, your wishful wishful thinking i think so i think it was wishful <laughs> thinking yeah wishful thinking um one one thing that i can say about audrey is i wish there were more recordings with her with her voice on it uh just like there was mm, that one me too there's that one 1968 archive release that came out like a little while is it true and, what, what they say about Dixie? Dixie, yeah. Just that one recording. It's just so beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, Audrey was the impetus for all of this, I think. You know, it, without her, you know, being musical and, you know, encouraging the boys to sing, I don't think any of this would have happened. Yeah. You know? Cody, do you so, have the Audrey Wilson issue of ESQ? Uh, no, I, I didn't believe... know there was one. Yeah. There, I'll look it up. A, it's the fall a uh, couple years back, I, fall of yeah. 2021, I think. So and, still, it's still in stock. Oh, yeah. And the, what reminded me is Wendy and I were talking uh, about Audrey for that edition. Mm -hmm. And what, what we both were very present and aware of, that Audrey was the one who told Brian about, you know, dogs get vibrations, they have good vibrations. Yeah. So Audrey yeah. is the one who's responsible for creating that terminology that you you can look anywhere today and you can see neon signs that say good vibes and, yeah. and yeah. hashtag good vibes and that's audrey wilson she was it really is. with it she was so hip she, I mean, she was amazing. so cool that's awesome you be sure yeah. to get that edition because you'll you'll be surprised at the things that audrey did that just trick you know kind of trickled and you know just found their way into the beach boys yeah vocabulary and everything else not just good vibrations but just her overall yeah. influence yeah and she just was goes a cool stay. she was a cool lady she was a funny grandmother she was, <laughs> i could tell you stories but it would it's not appropriate <laughs> oh boy <laughs> i'll just make i'll just make something up in my head <laughs> yeah well, well you'll get it once you read the edition you'll get a pretty good there, there's there's several there's several just uh, and and some of the pictures too that that are included. So yeah. so the Beach Boys yeah. on Pet Sounds weren't the first ones to have their photo taken feeding an animal. Okay. So like, right. I'm telling you, it goes it goes well, back. That, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'll, I'll order that with my next stack of ESQs. All right. Oh my gosh! I can only imagine your collection. <laughs> <laughs> it's only like ten or twelve right now, but oh, I have a okay. bunch of I have a bunch of books. I'm having a hard time finding a. Uh, john stebbins dennis wilson book but i got a got like a archive.org borrowed copy of it that i'm trying to read neat but yeah well one day uh, i know that you um were tight on time are you still okay to hang out um the the truth is that i've got to actually pick up food because my kids are oh they're really hungry don't get the I'm food sorry. don't get the food oh that's okay <laughs> but i really enjoyed meeting you cody yeah, me and too. It was it was a three. crazy surprise. Is there anything else you want to ask me while I'm on the phone? Oh man, no, I don't know. Can't think <laughs> of it. If I would have known, I would have had a whole list. But that's okay. <laughs> no, um, I'm sure we'll even. talk again. But um, I wanna, David, please um send me hit the information so I can look up his stuff. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. All right. I'll be emailing but, over for sure. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Wendy. It's so, so good meeting you. Yeah, likewise. Okay, take care. Have a good dinner. You too. <laughs> bye. Bye, Katie. Oh, Katie, say bye. Katie. Wait, let me get her. Woof, woof. Katie. Can you see her? Oh, bye, Katie. look at that, Katie. Bye, Katie. Katie say, say, Katie, say hello. Can you say hello? <laughs> she actually talks. Say hello. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Say hello. That's that's so precious. This oh, dog is hysterical. It's yeah. crazy.
I know. Oh, All right. Well, nice meeting you. And David, good to talk to you. You too. All right, guys. Bye. 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 This is cool. David. Yeah. So yeah, the the typically I talk to somebody for 10 to 15 minutes and then the VIP comes in, the uh, surprise guest comes in. But her her schedule being what it was, it that worked out great. And yeah. it was so this is just so bizarre that you happened to get the Carney thing today or your roommate got the Carney yeah. book and you happened to get the Wolf and Phillips cassette today. What no, are the chances? The, the cassette was like a week or so ago. Okay. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. You just got it. But that's just crazy the timing of, of of all that. That was that was cool. Not really. I'm always collecting. Like I I found my first smile bootleg yesterday. Really? Which one is it? Which one is uh, it? From 93. You want me to grab it real quick? It's like Yeah, let me see it cuz I I only got to listen to one side of one LP. Oh because... yes, I've got that. That is my favorite of all the vinyl bootlegs that I have. Yes. No that... way. So I I hit the jackpot. It's got it's even got yes. like session like session printouts. That that was one of the first bootlegs one of the earlier bootlegs that I bought. And that that one was the one because I think maybe I had one or two by that time I got that one. But I'm pretty sure they were all vinyl early on. It seems to me they were all vinyl early on. I know I had at least one. That was the one that when I got it, because it doesn't have doesn't have the replication of the booklet inside too. The smile booklet with all the guys, the photos and everything. No, this one, well, it may have. It just comes with a poster and it's got like a printout of session. Okay, okay, okay. It's been a long time since I've opened my my copy up. Yeah, and then color it. and then the yeah, and then the vinyl is colored, right? Yeah, red, blue, and green. Okay, yeah, yeah. That that is my that was the favorite of my of all of them that that i liked even 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 when i bought some smile uh bootleg cds that was that, really that, cool this day is my favorite it's like the way the way it's like whoever mixed that bootleg together did a really cool job of making it like not super grandiose and and just doing like cool mixes i don't know yeah. it's like i i had you know i've listened to the official 2011 box you know a few times over and that just sounded different and do you have the unsurpassed masters of the smile era stuff? I do. So then you got all the extra vegetables recordings. Yep. That's something I never like fully just completely powered through, but I, I hit shuffle all the time on like the whole library. I spent, and it was that set that you just showed. I spent easily and I, and I'm not, I'm making sure that I'm not exaggerating. I easily spent two years with a stereo system that had allowed uh, that had faders on it. Okay. Mixing different versions of smile two years. Wow. So do you have, you have your own mixes of smile. Well, not, well, since 2011, um, I, I, I don't use the Brian Wilson presents smile, uh, sequence. Um, okay. that's, I, I'm glad that that came out and I'm glad that it is what that is. Mm -hmm. But uh, good vibrations to me is not the finishing piece. Um, for for me, it's always been surfs up with your welcome. Right. Yeah. You know, like your welcome to me is the almost like a hidden like it wouldn't be listed like at the end of Sergeant Pepper's. There's that the reprise. Yeah, that the little de, 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 oh, there yeah. could never be another way to, whatever, whatever yeah. that little runoff track is, and that to me is kind of like. What for me personally, when I listen to my smile mix, that's kind of the your welcome is kind of that type of thing. It's this this little leftover, not abandoned track, but standalone. Thanks. It's it's like it's a, and it's the whole, yeah, just how it sounds to me and how it sits with me, yeah. And um, what I liked about the 2011 stuff that came out. Is it just it just helped kind of solidify? Well, my favorite track. I'll get out of the way here. My favorite all time Beach Boys recording is Cabin Essence. Okay, and it's, it's a shame. It's a shame that they cannot find the multi track for the vocals. I I uh, no, but I've got my now my buddy Lee Dempsey has got uh, the acetate one of the acetates for Cabin Essence, and when when he made a recording of it for me, he put it on a CD. And I listen to that. You can hear Dennis's part, the truck, the driving, truck man. driving man. Yeah, it's more pronounced. It's 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 up. It's more up in the mix. Uh, and, there's 
someone has a really good copy of that and there's like a beach boys discord that has like a very dedicated like bootleg community and and they have a like a pretty solid extraction of that part that's just it's that that song that song to i love it so much because um when i listen to it i feel like i'm looking at a painting you know i feel like i'm experiencing american history but it's yeah it's but it's audible but it's so strange because i mean i i'm sure there's other songs out there and i love pink floyd i love the moody blues they're actually my favorite group so i'm you know i listen to other things but cabin essence to me where just the the sheer and i and i just the genius of the execution let alone the the genius behind the writing of it but the execution of it and that's the whole group yeah. that their voices are steam coming out of this the the, the engine Ooh! i mean it's just nuts how how the idea okay we're gonna we're gonna record these instruments and our voices to make it sound like a train is coming down the tracks and then it's, actually being yeah. able to do that just to do that just to have one to have the idea and then to execute that in 1966 yeah just to have that floating around in your brain (laughs) (laughs) where it's it's so unique within smile of itself like it's it totally stands out even within all that material it's and to date smile is the for me it And, and you could even be talking we could even be talking about like a incomplete segment of something and I know I'm not saying it's it in terms of being maybe the greatest thing ever recorded or anything like that. It just for me, artistic, uh, artistic and spiritual growth. It's just so it's it's quite significant to me. And I, and I, you know, I hate that it became something that Brian put aside and then it took on this whole other thing that people started to find blame with people as to why it happened or reasons to blame things. And that's unfortunate because that's not really the story. The story is that this guy created this art and it started with, and it started before Pet Sounds. I mean, it started really as with the very first album they did. And it just, the art kept developing into something else and it kept developing into something else. Yeah. And then he found that the art was gonna be a part of what he embodied as a person. You know, and, and it's yeah. almost like he did that inadvertently, right? He knew he didn't want to write about surfing cars and girls anymore, but the 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 part of it where he discovers, oh, it's this is stuff that's about me and it's coming out of me. I don't think he ever consciously did that. Yeah, he, it just grew to that point. And yeah. it was just, he didn't have a choice at that point. It's like he had done so many records and it was just like, well, I'm just going to do what who feels does, right. Who does 12 albums in four years? No one. <laughs> no one. Literally no one. Twelve albums in four years. And it's and they're all so prolific. It's like and, he, and when you go back and look, think about Brian producing in sixty-three, he was producing Sharon Murray. He was producing Jan and Dean cuts. He was he was working with the survivors. He was, yep. you know, and uh Vicky Kotcher. Uh, Kenny and the Cadets. Kenny and yes, I mean just Yeah. He yeah. was he was just it was just like a and uh we're still we're still talking about it to this day you know and it's we're still hearing unreleased tracks that keep getting brought out and like someone on reddit last week posted on the cassette subreddit they're like i found 120 bootleg brian wilson beach boys cassettes and somebody had just picked them up from somebody thinking that he was just gonna use them for recording he was gonna record over them and i was like on this website like no you cannot record over this like come over to the discord we'll like help you figure it out and now he's like dubbing all these cassettes down for the for the bootleg community or whatever so is this stuff that nobody's ever heard of before or stuff that they've heard the titles of but they've not heard most of it's been heard some of it is upgraded quality of previously booted stuff that was just like so terrible sounding but yeah there's a there's a bootleg uh the honey's live in 84 that's never been heard. It's like, you know, it's, it's pretty abysmal, but you can still hear, you know, you can still hear Marilyn in the band. I think my friend Jez Graham 
I think I, well, I, it's been so long since Jez and I have talked about this, but Jez has done some songs with Steve Kalinich. Um, he lives down in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Okay. He lived out in California at the time, and I know that he auditioned and was hired to be a band member for the Honeys, but I can't recall, and that was in the early 80s when they put out their Ecstasy album. Yeah. Um, but I can't recall, and he, I remember him telling me it was for a tour, but I can't recall, it's been so long since we talked about it, I don't remember if he actually gone on tour with them, so I don't know if he's actually playing with what you've heard. When you're talking yeah, about. this bootleg cassette yeah. thing. <laughs> but he, he would be interested in in hearing I, i'll have to ask i'll have to pick his brain and and see because it's just been so it's a, over 20 years since we talked about that you know it's um, uh, yeah. of, of course the guy who found those cassettes he was in the uk and of course you know the uk like really loved the beach boys way more than america really did well for a time. certainly yeah for a time i think from that yeah. from the uh kind of the smiley smile era going forward through Holland, they had yeah. a deeper appreciation. Well, and I, I guess to a degree, Pet Sounds too, but Pet Sounds is like the equivalent, you know, just like I think of Kevin Essence like a painting, I think of Pet Sounds like a wine. I mean, okay. yeah, like you know, it's like wine. somebody went and put Pet Sounds down in their basement, right? And then you know, everybody wants to drink Pet Sounds. <laughs> <laughs> you only For have sure. one bottle? Man, <laughs> I'm I'm so deep in it now that I feel like Pet Sounds isn't even in my top five albums for some reason. Like I love it, you know, to the end of time. But there's so much that yeah, there is so much. I appreciate the thing that I, when it comes to Pet Sounds, that I go back to. You know, I may listen to the album in the car or something, but what, what I go back to when I'm when I'm in a particular mood, and I don't know what the mood is specifically. It's not a somber mood. But I, I love going back and listening to the tracks from Pet Sounds from the box set where you just get the uh, don't talk Man. strings. That's just, there's just something yeah. about those strings on don't talk, put your head on my shoulder that I just, I'm just. Um, my feeling for that, there's those background vocals for, I guess I just wasn't made for these times where they're singing in Spanish. Yeah. That, I made like an hour loop of that because it just strikes me to my core. Okay, so I did this VIP hardcover coffee table book back in 2016 for the Good Vibrations Tour. Okay. And I'm trying to find the page. I, I'm almost there. Here it is. Okay, I got to show this to you. So this was the page. I just wasn't made for these times that I put together. And it's the Oh, Spanish. there it is. Yeah. Right yes. in the middle. When will yeah. I be? One day I will be. Yes. Amazing. That is really awesome. A cuando sea un día sier. When will I be? One day I will be. That's amazing. And then the other lyric, people I know don't want to be where I'm at. It's just... oh, yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty buried in there too. Yeah, it is. It's really buried. It's but uh Ain't found the right thing I can put my heart and soul into. It's just, it's just, just those, yeah, so that's what I wanted to do. So I took all those kind of, kind of not well-known part of the lyrics, right? So that's yeah. the ain't found the right thing at the top, the Spanish in the middle, the translation yeah. on this side, and then the buried people I know don't want to know where I'm at. It's just. Is this book still in print or is this totally gone? Uh, I don't know if you can still get it um i'll be looking on ebay yes yeah well yeah i know i think in, nowadays if you buy it it doesn't come with the original when it came when it was originally and it's got handwritten lyrics by mike love autographed hand lyrics, good vibrations in the back that's wild and wouldn't it be nice i think in the front and it came with this little electronic card that had video in it that had, oh. that had video yeah i didn't do that i didn't design that and then uh, most of this, this artwork came from the Robert Graham shirt that they did for Mike. But this, uh, this lettering right here, I Dean, Dean Torrance or Jan and Dean designed. That's awesome. And so you can did, see it too. That's pretty cool. That, he did that. So we did that together. Um, there's two songs in, that in music just transport me so unusually and I don't know why they do. Um, I just wasn't made for these times is one. I think it's because of the way it was recorded or when it was recorded. The other one is Sarah by Fleetwood Mac. Okay. And it's something when I hear it, I just go somewhere else. I'll have to listen to that when we get off the call. 
it's uh i don't know i don't know what it is but uh well thank you yeah, thank, <laughs> i could thank talk you. to you for another hour if i didn't have another well i'll i'll be sending you some songs via email so thanks for everything and and have a good rest of your night david you too cody take care